The truck market has finally collapsed. Clearly Ford's got trucks for days. There's trucks all the way down here, trucks, and there's more trucks, more trucks, more trucks, and even more trucks. All the way around, there's trucks piled up on top of trucks, and they just can't get rid of them. Chevy's got all kinds of trucks. Look at this big jacked up unit right here. Trucks, 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 and more trucks. Ram just can't sell enough of these trucks. They're just not moving. People are not buying these overpriced units. We're now in a place where supply is very, very high and demand is quite low, primarily because of what we're seeing with inflation, interest rates as well. Just look across all the lots. It doesn't take very long to look down the rows of a Dodge Jeep Ram Stellantis type lot and you'll find vehicles lined up for miles on every single lot. Drive by any lot in your city and you'll find that there's excess amount of Dodge Ram products. Also take a look at Ford. Ford's also feeling the hurt. As a matter of fact, Ford had to scale back 1,600 Ford Lightnings, that's electric vehicles, from about 3,200 vehicles per week. Yeah, they realized they had to match the supply with the demand. The demand wasn't quite there, so they had to scale down and balance out the demand. And while GM has found the right balance of sales for supply and demand, the reality is they're one of the furthest behind in developing electrification. And certainly they've evenly admitted there's going to be some seriously bumpy roads ahead because they have literally been putting a lot of electrified market on the back burner and realize they have serious ground to make up. We also can't forget about even brands like Toyota. There was about a year ago where you could not find a Toyota to save your life, but now you can find Tundras and Tacomas all over the place. Even if you wanted to order a modern day Tundra, it's still going to cost you close to six figures. People just don't have the cash. Rams. Interestingly enough, they can't even sell their 2023 model years and already the 2024 model years are starting to flow in the back of the car lots. They can't sell a truck. And while Ford's held its own in terms of overall truck sales, the fact even the small amount of EV Lightning sales has helped keep them one of the leading OEMs for truck sales in the last third and fourth quarter of 2023. But that does not help and it's not enough because they overloaded their car lots and it doesn't take long to figure out as well. Ford has far too many vehicles on their lot and not enough customers to buy those trucks. There's been a shift in the winds, of course, we're seeing since the UAW strike kicked in and we got that totally resolved. Now what we're finding is there's layoffs. Now a lot of these manufacturers are literally blaming the low market strength and of course the low demand for these vehicles. But the bottom line remains, a lot of these manufacturers, Ram, they're coming out with these 24s and they're priced even higher MSRPs than they're filing for the 2023. We knew that would happen. It is a result of clearly having to settle for the UAW strike. Now, everybody definitely has a right to earn their keep, but the fa fact of the matter is a lot of the big three, Dodge, Stellantis, Ram, of course, Ford and GM, still wanted to maintain their margins and pay the increased wages to the UAW members and now they're snookered and caught up in the middle and realizing that they can't afford it. So now they've had to proceed with layoffs. GM basically had to lay off about 155 workers in Indiana, and Michigan and Ohio. Ford turfed 537 workers in Michigan and Ohio states. And of course Stellantis, which is essentially the brother from another mother, the overseer of Jeep, Ram, Dodge, Chrysler. They actually are the overarching brother and, and they actually had to lay off a whole swack of different workers unfortunately as well. All to the tune of about 570 workers had to get their walk-in papers. So when you look at to date, Ford has let go 1,865 workers, GM's unloaded 2,330 workers, and Stellantis as well had to release 640 workers, resulting in almost 5,000 worker layoffs, all allegedly related to this UAW strike. So it's bad enough insult to injury. Customers have just been getting raked over the coals for the last two and a half years, and they've realized they've paid too, too much for far too long. On the meantime, all the big three are continue trying to drive profits up, forsaking any kind of reality. It doesn't take long to look around. You can find Dodge trucks for as much as $155,000. I've even seen Ford trucks for $100,000, $125,000, and even up to two hundred dollars for a Raptor R. And Ford has had some quality control issues too. But it's not just that, they're not cheap. Look here we have a Ford Tremor with all the decals and badging, and it's huge money. How much? 
Even the RAM products are going for far too much money if you get a few widgets and you don't go for the bare bones work truck, you're going to pay through the nose. Six figures in a lot of cases. It's also not uncommon to pay close to six figures for a turbo six cylinder engine in the new Toyota Tundra. I like to equate this similar to the term the straw that broke the camel's back. Is this far too much for the consumer or are they just fed up and done with these high escalated prices that these truck manufacturers are pumping out? Yes, that's a big part of it. But honestly, the consumer is fed up with a lot of the quality of these vehicles too. So they realize I'm paying 80, 90, 100,000, $150,000 for a new truck, but the quality is not commensurate. And they're finding Fords wrapped up in recalls from fires and insulation underneath the drive lines. Rams, of course, have a whole host of problems like the 1500s that had a defective lockout in the center seat. And Rams, just look around. Find any vehicles that are living in the northern US or Canada, and after five years, they've got corrosion popping out everywhere, and after 10 years, they're rotted out completely. So the quality control has never really been there. And to add to that, allegedly, the latest story is $675 billion is what Ram is gonna be on the hook for for Cummins and the alleged defeating of the emissions equipment mounted on board. Yeah, that's about 630,000 units we're talking about here. This ranges from 2013 to 2019 Dodge Rams, three quarter and one ton pickup trucks with the Cummins engine. And unfortunately, GM hasn't been building a product that people can get behind either with their eight speed automatic transmissions that have been very failure prone, as well as their lifter issues that they just can't put in the rear view mirror. They've got engines that are problematic, the 5.3s, the 6.2s, People are just not getting confident with a lot of the pickup trucks coming out of GM. And that impacts Chevy Silverados, that impacts anything GMC, or even some of the Cadillac units. And on top of this, it's clear that the manufacturers, the OEMs, are losing confidence in this whole marketplace as well. And while GM has had a great third quarter of 2023 and a lot of their trucks have been selling, the fact remains is they're starting to level out. They don't have the confidence, as a matter of fact, they're delaying the build of their electric truck plant as well as the battery manufacturing facility. Same with Ford, they put on their battery manufacturing facility on hold as well. And Ram, they just don't really have anything in the works just yet anyway. Now while truck fleet sales seem to be holding their own, that's largely because of the need for the work truck companies, owners of businesses that need a truck to get around and do the actual work. But people that are making that choice on the retail market just to go out and pick up a pickup truck, people are often thinking twice, three times. They don't necessarily need it. It's a huge dollar, a huge expense, and the quality doesn't necessarily follow the price tag. Now, according to Cox Automotive, we've now exceeded two and a half million units of inventory sitting out on the market that they just can't sell. That's approximately an average of 71 days supply that just aren't going away. All this with a listing price of 47,456 buckaroos that's actually up about 57% or the equivalent of about 925,000 units since the same time last year. So on top of this, this doesn't just impact the consumer. Now there's people that are actually assembling a lot of these vehicles. Unfortunately, they are losing their jobs. There's lots of layoffs. And as a matter of fact, last week Stellantis advertised that they're cutting one of three shifts at their Detroit Jeep plant in Toledo, Ohio. All this directly off the heels of the fact that California, several states, and even Canada have announced 2035 pure ICE vehicles are gone and it needs to be only EV on the marketplace. That's driving the lower and weaker demand for the internal combustion drivetrains. So also according to Cox Automotive, a lot of these manufacturers struggle with extra inventory in the last six months because now the market is starting to catch up and play role reversal. Unfortunately, manufacturers are still trying to hold their hoard a hold a hard line here and aren't giving way. Even with that 71 day average inventory day supply, Chevy's sitting right on the line of average and GMC product line are sitting at 73, slightly above average. Ford is sitting at least 50% above the industry average with about 105 days of inventory available. Jeep leads the pack by a long shot at 128 days supply. And while his younger brother Ram is sitting about 114 days supply, means that Stellantis Group is one of the biggest losers and struggles right now with high supply and low demand. So it sounds like the proverbial straw snapped that camel's back in half simply by the fact that consumers literally are in a place right now where they have the best bargaining power. Even though the OEMs believe and are trying to constantly remind you that they have the upper hand, the bottom line is 
2023 model years are still out there, lots of them, everywhere. While 2024s are rolling in, and I've said this before in other videos, this is that time you want to get serious about buying. Have the money in hand. Don't necessarily take out a large loan. If you have cash in hand, this might be an opportunity to get yourself a deal. Don't take first deal, shop around, because what you have are Rams. They're flooding the markets right now with 23s. They even have some 22 model years that are brand new yet that they can't get rid of. And 24s are starting to flood down. Of course, Ford's the same problem. They've got excess number of 24 models and 23 models sitting around. GM, not as many excess inventory sitting around, but the fact remains is there's still that balancing, a fine balancing act between high high too much inventory and not enough buyers to buy it. Of course, where do those buyers come into the place? Well, the fact remains is high interest rates. Of course, people aren't necessarily in a place where they want to take on a 12, 14% interest. Even now, some of these manufacturers are starting to say, we're trying to incentivize offering up lower cost incentives on the Ford Lightnings, trying to push their EVs. A lot of these other manufacturers are trying to offer now, I'm starting to see their scale down to even 0% interest on some of their in-house loans because they're just trying to facilitate the purchasing or the sales of many of their trucks. But these trucks are not selling. Even with a lot of these incentives, customers are just not finding in enough of this incentive to move on and actually pull a formal trigger and get it done. The fact remains is these prices are way too high. They still remain too high. Dealers are playing a yo-yo game with a truck that sits on a lot for an extended period of time. They mark it up, mark it up. Now they're not buying. People aren't buying that truck. It starts to slide down. Then as the market swings and swales, these manufacturers or the dealer at the dealer level are starting to constantly up and down with some of these prices. They're constantly playing games with some of the consumers now. Don't have it. Know what that MSRP and stick to your guns. The old days of market adjustment fee should definitely be out the window and any of these manufacturers now trying to play that game are the first ones you want to walk away from. Don't play games with those types of dealers because clearly they're clearly out to lunch. It's not that type of market. The market now is clearly a buyer's market. And the sellers, the OEM levels, are going to be very hungry and very motivated to sell their product. Remember, another ace in the pocket that you might have as a consumer is the simple fact that a lot of these markets now are transitioning to pure EV. We're, we're hearing years of 2030, 2035, California, as I mentioned already, Canada, even in Europe. So a lot of these vehicles that wind up in different places within the globe are targeting 2030, 2035, where it has to be pure EV. Now, if you want to get yourself an internal combustion engine, that's fine, but don't be wrangled in there. The manufacturers are going to be very hungry trying to unload some of these internal combustion engines. Remember, GM's a little behind the game with the sales of EV product. They don't have that type of vehicle. Sure, they've got the Hummer EV. Sure, they've got the Bolt EV. But if you want a good old-fashioned pickup truck, you've got to go down the big three. Now, we also have to remember Ford Lightning isn't selling that great, not as well as they said. They don't have the range, the quality with Ford hasn't quite been there, and the overpricing of it just isn't palatable to the consumer. So what's going to happen to the truck market? Well, guess what? It's collapsing. So with all of that said, everybody, I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to click right there. You're going to probably really understand in more depth what's going on with Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, Stellantis. They're in a world of hurt. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.